Are we living in a world full of secrets and lies? And is that world decided by secret societies and government cover-ups? Do you ever wonder if this is all just a cover-up for something bigger? Well then brace yourself for a roller coaster ride through the depths and the darkest corners of the human consciousness. Join me on an exploration through conspiracy theories past and present. Are you ready to challenge the status quo? Hey there fellow truth seekers, I'm Gemini Johnny, and today we're going to be embarking on an epic journey through the world that is conspiracy theories. So buckle up, because we're about to explore the fascinating history of these mind-bending tales, separating fact from fiction, and diving deep into what it all means for today's society. So grab your tinfoil hats, folks. We're about to embark on a wild ride. So let's talk about conspiracy theories, shall we? According to the good old Oxford Dictionary, it's a Webster's, to conspire is to secretly plan an unlawful act. In other words, it just means that something fishy is going on behind the scenes. But like, really fishy. A conspiracy theory is when people believe some sneaky group, usually with a lot of power, is pulling the strings and causing stuff to happen. Whether it's a major event or just something weird and unexplained. Now the term conspiracy theory didn't just pop up out of nowhere. It's been around for ages, lurking in the shadows of history. Oxford cites a 1909 article in the American Historical Review as the earliest known usage, although it also appeared in print several decades before that as well. But it really started gaining traction back in the mid-1900s during the good old Cold War era. You know, tensions were high, spies were everywhere, and your neighbor was a commie. And everyone was just a little paranoid. Legally speaking, a conspiracy is when a bunch of folks get together to do something shady, like rob a bank or I don't know, take over the world. Try to take over the world. So a conspiracy theory originally referred to ideas or guesses about these secretive plots, usually involving big shot groups like governments or spy agencies. But over time, it has morphed into something much bigger. It became this catch-all phrase for the explanation that any kind of sneaky stuff is going on behind the scenes. You know, like when people start questioning the narrative of things and start coming up with their own narratives about what really happened. And let's not forget about the academic side of things. Yeah, even smart people like to get in on the conspiracy theories action too. Scholars have been digging into the psychology and the sociology of conspiracy theories, trying to figure out why some people are more likely to believe them and why they spread like wildfire through our society. It's like a whole other world of intrigue and mystery, but with more books and less tin hats. Whether as a means of making sense of complex events, questioning official narratives, or expressing distrust in authority, Conspiracy theories remain a prominent feature in the zeitgeist of the world that we live in, reflecting deeper anxieties and uncertainties within society. So conspiracy theories aren't just bedtime stories for the paranoid. No, in fact, they've been woven into the fabric of human existence since the beginning of time. From ancient civilizations to modern day governments, people have always been drawn to the allure of secret plots and hidden agendas. Whether it's whispers of a shadowy cabal controlling the world's stage, or tales of extraterrestrial visitors among us. Conspiracy theories have captured the imaginations of countless individuals throughout the ages. Even before the United States was a nation, conspiracy theories were already in the air. During the colonial era, years of witchcraft and occult practices fueled hysteria, leading to infamous episodes like during the Salem Witch Trials. These trials were fueled by rumors and accusations of secret pacts with the devil, demonstrating exactly how conspiracy theories can take hold and cause dire consequences. The struggle for independence from British rule provided fertile grounds for conspiracy theories. Patriots and loyalists alike spread rumors of British spies, secret pacts, and plots to undermine the revolutionary cause. One notable example is the Conway Cabal, a supposed conspiracy to remove General George Washington from his command during the Revolutionary War. And who could forget America's first political scandal, the Hamilton-Reynolds affair? The relationship between Alexander Hamilton and Maria Reynolds, whose husband then blackmailed the founding father and sitting secretary of treasury. As the nation expanded and tensions over slavery grew, conspiracy theories flourished. The anti-Masonic movement of the early 19th century accused Freemasons of secret plots and undue influence on politics and society. Later, the nativist Know Nothing Party promoted conspiracy theories around Catholic immigrants and their supposed allegiance to the Pope. The Civil War and its aftermath gave rise to conspiracy theories on both sides of the conflict. The assassination of President Abraham Lincoln sparked rumors of a wider conspiracy involving Confederate sympathizers. During Reconstruction, white supremacist groups like the Ku Klux Klan spread conspiracy conspiracy theories about carpetbaggers and scalawags. Known as carpetbaggers, a fair number of both opportunistic and well-intentioned northerners moved into the southern states to purchase, lease, or partner with planners now stripped of their enslaved labor force. 
many hoping to make money from cotton. To their majority Southern opponents, Southern white Republicans were labeled as scalabays for supporting Northern interference into the old ways of the South. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw the rise of industrialization and urbanization, along with growing anxieties about corporate power and government corruption. Populist movements railed against the moneyed interests and spread conspiracy theories about banking cartels and secret cabals controlling the economy. Then the Cold War era brought a whole new wave of conspiracy theories worried about communism and nuclear annihilation. The McCarthy era saw widespread paranoia about communist infiltration into media, politics, and academia, leading to witch hunts and blacklists. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963 spawned numerous conspiracy theories, fueling suspicions of government cover-ups and shadowy conspirators. The terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, and its subsequent war on terror, ushered in a new era of conspiracy theories. From claims of foreknowledge and involvement in the attacks, to suspicions of false flag operations and the confirmation of mass surveillance, the events of 9-11 gave rise to a myriad of conspiracy theories that are still affecting the world today. But why are we so fascinated by these tales? Well, psychologists suggest that conspiracy theories serve a psychological need for certainty and control in an uncertain world. By attributing complex events to simple, sinister explanations, we can make sense of the chaos around us and regain a sense of agency. In essence, conspiracy theories offer a comforting narrative in an otherwise bewildering reality. It could also have something to do with all the conspiracies that people keep committing. There is a belief that you'll hear going around in the conspiracy theory circles that the term conspiracy theory itself is the subject of a conspiracy theory. Some people believe that conspiracy theory, the term, was invented by the CIA in the 60s. This is not true. We know this for a fact because we have evidence from long before that of people using the term. So, while there is an argument to be made that potentially the CIA weaponized the term, we do know for sure that they didn't invent it. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Are any of these stories true? Well, surprisingly, yes, or maybe not surprisingly, depending on who you ask. While many, most, are nothing more than fanciful speculation, there have been instances where conspiracy theories turned out to be grounded in reality. Take, for example, the infamous Watergate scandal that brought down President Nixon. In June 1972, five men were arrested breaking into the DNC headquarters at the Watergate office complex in Washington, D.C. Initially dismissed as a routine burglary, suspicions arose when it was found out that the five men had ties to the Nixon administration. The scandal escalated when it became apparent that Nixon and his aides were involved in covering up their connections to the break-in. This led to investigations by journalists and congressional committees. As investigations unfolded, evidence became apparent of various abuses of power by the Nixon administration, including illegal wiretapping, obstruction of justice, and using government agencies to target political opponents. Several high-ranking members of the Nixon administration, including White House Chief of Staff H.R. Haldeman and Attorney General John Mitchell, resigned or were indicted or convicted for their roles in the scandal. Facing almost certain impeachment and removal from office, President Nixon announced his resignation on August 8, 1974, becoming the first and only U.S. president to resign from office. In all the decisions I have made in my public life, I have always tried to do what was best for the nation. Throughout the long and difficult period of Watergate, I have felt it was my duty to persevere, to make every possible effort to complete the term of office to which you elected me. In the past few days, however, it has become evident to me that I no longer have a strong enough political base in the Congress to justify continuing that effort. I would have preferred to carry through to the finish whatever the personal agony it would have involved and my family unanimously urged me to do so. But the interests of the nation must always come before any personal considerations. From the discussions I have had with congressional and other leaders, I have concluded that because of the Watergate matter, I might not have the support of the Congress that I would consider necessary to back the very difficult decisions and carry out the duties of this office in the way the interests of the nation will require. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office.
The Watergate scandal had far-reaching consequences, leading to widespread disillusionment with government and politics. It also prompted significant reforms aimed at increasing transparency and accountability in government, such as campaign finance laws and the establishment of congressional oversight mechanisms. You didn't think I was going to do a video on conspiracy theories without talking about the CIA's MKUltra program, did you? For decades, skeptics dismissed the claims of mind control as the stuff of just science fiction. However, declassified documents later confirmed that the CIA had indeed conducted unethical experiments on unwitting subjects, ranging from LSD mind control to hypnosis and beyond. MKUltra was launched during the 1950s during the Cold War era, motivated by fears of brainwashing techniques used by enemy states, specifically the Soviet Union and North Korea. The program was initially approved by CIA director Alan Dulles and funded through various channels. MKUltra involved a wide range of experiments, many of which were done without the knowledge or consent of the subjects. These experiments included the use of drugs like LSD, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, and psychological torture techniques. One of the most infamous aspects of MKUltra was its experimentation with LSD, a powerful hallucinogenic drug. The CIA researchers hoped to use LSD for mind control and interrogation purposes. LSD was administered to unwitting subjects, including CIA employees, prisoners, military personnel, and even members of the public, often leading to severe psychological distress and long-lasting negative effects. What were you told at the time of your father's death? I was told that your father has had an accident. Many of the experiments conducted under MKUltra were highly unethical and violated basic principles of human rights and medical ethics. Subjects were often subjected to extreme forms of manipulation and coercion, and their well-being was disregarded in pursuit of the program's goals. MKUltra remained a closely guarded secret for decades. But details of the program began to emerge in the 1970s through investigative journalism and congressional hearings. In 1973, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered the destruction of most of the MKUltra files, further complicating efforts to fully uncover the extent of the program's activities. Despite attempts by the CIA to destroy all records of MKUltra, some documents did survive and were eventually declassified. However, much of the program's history remains shrouded in secrecy. MKUltra stands as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked government experimentation and abuses of power. It serves as a cautionary tale about the need for transparency, oversight, and respect for ethical principles in scientific research and government activities. MKUltra, a shadowy chapter in American history. But it is enough to make you question, what other dark secrets are lurking in the shadows, just waiting to be uncovered? Picture this. It's the 1950s, 1960s, a time of civil rights activism, anti-war protests, and growing social unrest in the United States. The FBI, under the leadership of director J. Edgar Hoover, is keeping a close eye on these movements. And they're not just watching. They're actively working to disrupt and dismantle them. COINTELPRO, short for counterintelligence program, was the FBI's secret weapon in its war against dissent. The program aimed to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize political organizations and individuals deemed too subversive or radical. Sounds pretty sinister, right? Well, it gets worse. COINTELPRO targeted a wide range of groups and individuals, including civil rights leaders, anti-war activists, feminist organizations, and even the Black Panther Party. The FBI used a variety of tactics to achieve its goals, from surveillance and wiretapping to infiltration and sabotage. For example, they sent anonymous letters to activists, sowing discord and distrust within their ranks. They spread false rumors and planted fake news stories to discredit their targets. They even went so far as to harass and intimidate individuals, using tactics like blackmail and threats of violence. But perhaps the most chilling aspect of COINTELPRO was their involvement with the assassination of the Black Panther Party leader, Fred Hampton. In a coordinated raid in 1969, Chicago police, with the assistance of the FBI, stormed Hampton's apartment in a pre-dawn raid and gunned him down in his own bed. He was only 21 years old. It was later revealed that the FBI had been actively surveilling Hampton and had provided the police with detailed floor plans of his apartment. Now, here's the thing. COINTELPRO wasn't just about targeting dangerous radicals. It was about preserving the status quo, protecting the interests of the powerful, and crushing dissent by any means necessary. It was a blatant abuse of power, a violation of civil liberties, and a stain on the legacy of the American democracy. In the aftermath of COINTELPRO, there were congressional investigations, lawsuits, and calls for reform. But the damage had been done, and the scars of COINTELPRO 
continue to haunt us to this day. It serves as a chilling reminder of the dangers of unchecked government power and the importance of safeguarding our civil liberties and democratic principles. And let's not forget the role of social media in amplifying these narratives. Platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and even here on YouTube have become breeding grounds for conspiracy theories, providing a megaphone for fringe ideas to reach a wider audience. With the literal click of a button, a conspiracy theory can go viral, reaching millions of people within a matter of hours. And the algorithms that power these platforms often prioritize engagement and sensational content, making conspiracy theories particularly conducive to virality. Social media has also facilitated the formation of echo chambers, where like-minded individuals congregate to reinforce each other's beliefs. This creates an environment where conspiracy theories can thrive unchecked as users are exposed to a steady stream of content to reaffirm their pre-existing beliefs. Then confirmation bias further entrenches these beliefs, as users seek out information that confirms their worldview while ignoring evidence to the contrary. Social media platforms use algorithmic recommendation systems to suggest content to users based on their past behaviors and preferences. While these algorithms are designed to increase engagement and keep users on the platform, they can also inadvertently promote conspiracy theories or misinformation by promoting content that is sensational or controversial. The anonymity afforded by social media allows users to spread conspiracy theories without fear of accountability or consequences. This can lead to a disinhibition effect where users feel emboldened to express extreme or fringe beliefs that they may not express in a face-to-face -face setting. Bet you won't say it to my face just took a whole new meaning. Social media has contributed to the polarization of society by amplifying extremist ideas and widening ideological divides. And conspiracy theories often exploit these divisions, framing issues of us versus them and, and fostering distrust of mainstream institutions and sources of information. With algorithms designed to prioritize engagement over accuracy, it's no wonder that conspiracy theories will often go viral, spreading like a digital contagion through the online ecosystem. In today's hyper-connected world, it's easier than ever for falsehoods to spread like wildfire, fueled by echo chambers and confirmation bias. From the dangerous anti-vaccine movement to the insidious QAnon conspiracy, we've seen how these theories can have real-world impact, sowing division and distrust in society. So where does that leave us, and what are we supposed to do about it? Well, that's a complex question with no easy answers. On one hand, we live in an age of unprecedented access to information at our literal fingertips, where anyone with an internet connection can become a citizen journalist. But on the other hand, we are drowning in a sea of misinformation and disinformation, making it increasingly difficult to separate fact from fiction. But fear not, my friends, for not all is lost. So you're telling me there's a chance. By cultivating critical thinking skills, fostering media literacy, and promoting open dialogue, we can combat the spread of ridiculous conspiracy theories so that we can focus on the ones actually happening in the world and together, hopefully, build a more resilient society. It won't be easy and there are no quick fixes, but together we can navigate this maze of misinformation and emerge stronger on the other side. So how do we do that? Well, let's talk about media literacy. It's all about being savvy and sharp when it comes to things we hear, read, and see in the media. And I've got a few tips on how you can do just that. First up, we have got to start flexing those critical thinking muscles. It's within all of us. We all have the ability to be a critical thinker. It doesn't seem to be used by all of us. So what is critical thinking? What does it mean to be a critical thinker? It means not just taking everything at face value, but instead asking questions like, who is saying this? What's their angle? Can I trust them? I can't even count how many times I've seen an article that blew my mind until I went to their website and saw them selling Jesus tears for four easy payments of $49.99 or an update on Batboy and the life he's leading today. And next, let's talk sources. Just like you wouldn't trust a random guy on the street with your entire life story, it's important to know where this info is coming from. Look for reputable sources that have a solid track record of getting things right. And hey, Fact checking is your new best friend. If something sounds too good to be true or too crazy to believe, it's worth doing a quick fact check. And there are some awesome fact checking websites out there like Snopes and factcheck.org that can help you separate the fact from fiction. And I know people have their doubts about those websites, but a good thing to keep an eye out for is their sources. Most of these websites at the bottom of the page will have a whole list of sources from where they got this information from. I know Wikipedia is not the most reliable source, but there are always sources at the bottom of a Wikipedia page that you can double check and make sure that all of the information is correct. Now let's tackle bias. We all have our own perspective, right? Well, so do media outlets. It's important to recognize this and try to look for different viewpoints so you can get a more balanced picture of what's really going on. 
Oh, and keep an eye out for sneaky little tricks. Sometimes media outlets use clickbait headlines or try to play on your emotions to get you to click and share. Stay sharp and don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. So, have you thought about your digital skills lately? Knowing how to navigate the online world safely is key. Make sure you are protecting your privacy, spotting scams, and being a responsible digital citizen. And last but not least, don't be afraid to chat about it. Have conversations with your friends, family, even your dog about media literacy. Share tips, ask questions, and learn from each other's experiences. That's what this life is all about, right? And there you have it, folks, the wild and wacky world of conspiracy theories laid bare for you all to see. This is the first installment of this series, and in the future, we'll be doing less of the history and more of the deep dive into the conspiracy theories. We might debunk, we might confirm. You never know. Now, before you go down your own rabbit hole of investigation, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you're not to join our ever-growing community of truth seekers. Remember, this isn't always about finding the answers. It's about the thrill of questioning, exploring the uncharted, and embracing the unknown. So stay open-minded, stay authentic, and stay curious. I'm your host through the unknown, Gemini Johnny, signing off. So until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and let's continue to unravel the mysteries together.